Hey, what's up? Back with Brian. Where are you? Hold on, I'm gonna sneeze. Bless you. Ooh, that was a bad one. But um, today we're doing uh the uh, part three, finally part three of this uh, uh debate that we're doing here. I don't know. I don't know. We gotta organize what we're gonna be actually making today. We gotta organize the recordings and stuff. Yeah, uh, we're making a bunch of stuff today. Election day, we got the school day off. We we, we already had a few other vid- we already have a few other videos pre-recorded. One of which I just have to actually switch the scheduling to real quick. Hold on. You can keep talking while I'm doing that. All right. So we're gonna be going the first part of this debate. Part three, we're together. First, yep. Very first part, Tyler's gonna react to my video, debunk my sort of points. Second, ha- second portion, I'm going to go over his video and debunk all of his points better than Tyler did in the first half. And then in the third part, we're just gonna have open debate for bottling to either trying to defend our videos or to. Attack the other person's video or their rebuttal. So with that, you have the floor. I'm not allowed to talk until you finish. Yeah. So and shut up. Yeah. So don't that. talk so until I until myself. it's my turn to talk. Okay. Um. So anyway, let me go. So your main point was exciting, but less fair. And to my rebuttal, I say. Excitement doesn't need to be fabricated. This is fabricated excitement, and it doesn't need to be that way. There have been... The system, in my opinion, is way less fair. Should be, could be, should be, and could be a lot more balanced between excitement and fair. Because we've seen so many races near the end of seasons in the old format where they have been exciting, they've been intense, even if the champion is all but decided or has already been decided. We they see so many of those action points because now that wasn't always only because of the point system. That was also because there was because that was the greatest racing package in the history of the sport, uh, with some of the greatest tracks and some of the greatest times. Um, so there's a lot of other factors that go into that. But one of them is They've got nothing to lose because there's actually they get they can't win the championship, so they might as well just go for the win in the race. So that provides even more time when they have nothing to lose. Whereas you got eight drivers that are just gonna lay in the if they go to Talladega in the round of eight, they're just gonna go in the back of the field all day and do nothing and make it a boring race till the very end when everybody wrecks. I mean that's just it's fabricated excitement. Whereas it's not raw as when they do it like that. So another point is like it's not not is is not fair at all. Like you can't even say it's even close to balanced. It's like Kevin Harvick's um upset loss in the round of eight is just another footnote in this Chase's long history of screwing over drivers. It did it to Jeff Gordon three times. It's done it to Carl Edwards twice. Um well technically three times, but that he wasn't even contention in twenty sixteen in the normal way. Did it to Kevin Harvick. There's only been three legitimate champions in the entire history of the chase. Tony Stewart in 2005, Brax Lasky in 2002, and uh, Martin Truex in 2017. Those are the only three legitimate champions in the entire um, chase's history. And I think that's pretty sad when you see the chase has been around since 2004. 17 seasons now with it, and there's only been... Um, three legitimate champions like that's not great if if they wanted more of a balance between fair and excitement then you got to make it so where somebody who dominates the first 26 races of the season doesn't have to put it like Kevin Harvick wins the regular season championship he has nine victories like 26 top tens like 20 top fives okay he's super consistent all year he's by far the best driver especially after they came out of out of the um quarantine and he doesn't even make the round of eight like that's so stupid um that's that that shouldn't even have he shouldn't even had to been fighting there so i think it's stupid it's not fair at all the excitement is fabricated and while some of it's good it's not like always good because 
that's my 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 rebuttal sort of thing. So that's that's what I gotta say. All right, I'm, so I can do my my little second half now. Go. Okay, let's do this. All right. So you talk about all these great great championship battles and great battles for the win that would would happen in the old So there are so few and far between. Like, and you talk about drivers that don't have anything to lose, so they race for the win. Any driver that isn't in the playoffs has nothing to lose, and they're going to be doing the same thing for 10 races. And drivers below in the regular season are also going to do everything they can to get the win because they don't really have anything to lose, and that will qualify them for the playoffs. Kind of a silly rule, but whatever. Um, He talked about Kevin Harvick. There was a perfect storm of things that had to go wrong for Kevin Harvick to be eliminated. Think about this. If he doesn't crash the Daytona road course he's in, if he gets a, if he gets a single stage point, a, if is a single position higher in any stage or race, he advances. You know, there, if, if they penalize Chase Elliott, he advances. If they don't throw the caution, if they throw the caution earlier in Texas, he advances. If they have a different error package, he can't, he advances. If Joe gets racing and doesn't have team orders, he advances. That's such an outlier and a perfect storm of, of all sorts of facts. But we can't really count it against the system too much. It's such a bizarre year anyway that we're not going to look at like this year back and say this was the best year or some crazy year or anything. And talking about fabricated moments, yeah, they don't need to be fabricated. We have the duty to be fabricated because otherwise they won't be there. They come so few times naturally. We talk about some of the greatest races ever. Obviously, we look at the 1992 season where six drivers were mathematically in contention and three drivers were really in contention. Um, you know, the three that were real, more realistically going to win the championship. Um, the bottom three weren't really close. But we can probably name a few others. I can't name any off the top of my head um, that were good two or three car battles. But you're basically getting a 1992 Hooters 500 without uh, the points for leading lap and the most lap, which is, but yeah, every year, and it's still as exciting as ever. You weren't there for the race on uh, Martinsville, but the last 100 laps, I was, at, my dad doesn't care about the sport at all, was, was, was very invested in who was going to get in and get out because it was actually really exciting to track. The broadcast has a great job of it. And it still rewards what you've done throughout the season. Just as Kevin Harvick. But he, if he had spent done so well that he was one point away from being able to afford a bad Texas and a bad Martinsville. You know, he would have been, if he'd scored one more point anywhere else, finished one point higher in the state, finished one place higher in a race, didn't have a DNF. If he had been just a tad more consistent, he'd be able to advance. That example is unfair to judge the system on because there, there's so many, so many things that had to go wrong for that specific thing. And to say that it's not fair at all isn't isn't really true. I'd say 2019 was pretty fair. Um, 2016 reasonably fair. I don't really like it, but yeah, 2016 is 2015 questionable. What I think? No, I, absolutely not. 2014. Whatever. Um, the, there have really only been three in the current system I'm arguing for. I'm not arguing for anything before 2017. So 2017 crowned it perfectly. 2018, um, they crowned the best driver in the playoffs, not in the regular season. Uh, 2019, I'd say pretty reasonable. Um, coming up when it counts. 2020, then Hamlin wins, then yes. Otherwise, probably not. So, it's, it's definitely not as fair, but I think we can look at it and say that it is more exciting enough that the excitement really outweighs the fairness, because in reality, NASCAR, NASCAR's business is a crown champion, but they also need to sell ads in a normal year with butts and seats. So, they got to prioritize both pretty equally. Mm-hmm. That's all I have to say about that.
Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically what you're wanting is for somebody who got nine wins during the season, it was by far the most consistent and performed by far the best out of anybody, to say, oh, you didn't do good enough when he bite, when he kicked everybody's asses for 26 races, then comes into the playoffs and plays it conservatively, only to get fucked over in the last couple of races and get screwed out of a much-deserving title that he should have clinched before Martinsville anyways. You're saying that's that's a respectably fair system just to get fabricated excitement for the fans because they're so fucking desperate to get fans because they screwed up the Gen 4 package and made it and decided to make it safer when in reality it, they could have done a lot better to keep the Gen 4 car but make it safer and they chose not to. They chose to make an ugly ass COT car and then they brought in the Gen 6 car which is other than 2014, has been absolute ass. So, um, yeah, okay, all right. Your your argument is that the that the failure to keep the Gen Four car is the reason that Kevin Harvick didn't. Win. I'm saying there are so many things that that had to go wrong for Kevin Harvick to not make it. Yeah, but he now. shouldn't even needed. That shouldn't even have been possible to happen because of all he did during the regular season and in the playoffs. Well, he won a race in the he won a couple races in the playoffs. Um, okay, he got handed he he got handed Darlington, and he kind of if if there was a left car, he kind of inherited Bristol too. So yeah, inherited I would say that if Bristol. We were under the old points format. Then Kevin Harvick wouldn't have won because the Martin Truex Jr. and Chase Elliott would have been. Uh, they would have been uh, what sort of looking for. They wouldn't. Have, they would have been a lot more conservative. They wouldn't have wrecked each other because they both needed the point. Mm -hmm. We would already know that Kevin Harvick's champion in that race. It's a Martinsville race. It's going to be decent because it's because it's Martinsville. But it would not have compared. And really, Kevin Harvick had. There were so many things working against him. Even other actions NASCAR took. Aero package. NASCAR's decision. Caution in Texas, coming out too late, and screwing Harvick. He had a race-winning car, your top five car. NASCAR's decision. Not penalizing Chase Elliott or Eric Jones or Denny Hamlin. NASCAR's decision. NASCAR made so many other decisions not related to the format. That's why Kevin Harvick was a was a winner. And also, he could have done better, but but it's the fact yeah. it's the fact that he was rounded down these drivers that did mediocre at best all season long to where he was so dominant like in two if you won if you had performed even in like the uh older chase format like the first one before um 2000 like 12 or something i think that's when they changed it up or the 2007 one or two they changed it up like the very first iteration of the chase format, Harvick would have had the championship locked up way earlier, even under that format. It's so stupid and, that they and, rounded and it he, down. He, he wouldn't, though. They rounded it. They, they keep... I don't like how they round it down, okay? Because then it just basically erases whatever lead you had built up through the first 26 races. This system does not reward consistency. It rewards luckiness in the last 10 races, and that's bullshit because that does not crown a champion. That crowns somebody who gets fucking lucky through the final 10 races versus a guy who has been really good all season, maybe wins once in the chase, but doesn't even get a chance. Look at Jeff Gordon in 2007. It's the same situation. He should have locked it up at the same point that Harvick should have locked up the 2020 championship, but he didn't okay. because he was rounded I'm down. Not, I'm not, okay. First of all, the part you're talking about, the 2014 and 2016 format was uh, was luck. Not going to deny that. We're past that. Jeff Gordon, 2007. First of all, he shouldn't have won. Second of all, that's not the format of marketing. And really, yes, there is a bit of luck, but the goal is to win races and win stages. He won nine races. He didn't. It's not like he uh, won like two races. He won nine races. We're gonna do we're gonna do old old races, and how come you can win eight races and not win the championship? Because he was inconsistent. Because Ryan Newman was inconsistent. Harvick was consistent. Incons and consistency and inconsistency are just made up words that you use to defend the system. They're not. They they mean nothing of substance. Yes, they do mean something. For define, finishing, define, define what you mean by consistency. Do it. Consistency is is what Harvick did. Twenty six top tens, you, nine you, wins. You, you, no, not, not an anecdote, not an example. I want a definition of the word. 
consistency in the is context of this episode. consistency. Okay, is having a consistent amount of wins. So you like you can't you, use the word in the definition. Why do you want to do? You, why do you even think consistency I mean, is not a word? Consistency isn't a word, a word because you. Have any meaning. You just use it, and and your defense for every champion crowned under your system is that they were the most consistent driver over the season. And that's because how yeah. that's how it works. You work that's if you're consistent, that means you worked up the most amount of points over the season. And at the end of the season, you are the champion. That's how it works. That's how it should work. Being consistent is equivalent to being first in the point standing. Yes. So they were the champion because they were first in the point standings. Yes. That's not a, that's not, that's a weird definition. What are you on? If you win the, if what you're first. On? You're the first in the point standings. You are the champion, and therefore you are probably the most consistent, at least under the old format. Probably. Under the new format, you said probably. Under, I mean, there's certain circumstances that could happen, but they're so fucking far fetched that that doesn't. It's barely even exactly. impossible. And that's what happened this year. Okay. Um. Whatever. Okay. You just don't like the word. You don't like the words consistent and inconsistent. You don't like the words consistent and inconsistent because you know that that's the way that it should be and that's not the way you want it to be. I don't like the words because they don't have a definition. And they do have a definition. You want me to look up a true... Do you want me to go to WebMD? Do you want me to go up a WebMD and look up the definition of consistency? I'm sure it's not going to be a NASCAR definition. Consistently. Did you say WebMD? Hold on. You say WebMD is where I should look this up. Okay, here we go. Ready? Conformity in the application of something typically in which it is necessary for the sake of logic, accuracy, or fairness. Logic, accuracy, and fairness. So, let's say this. Let's say this. You, by that definition, you'd be consistent if you finished 25th every week because you were consistently finishing 25th. They're the most consistent driver because they finished close to their... Whatever the whole year. That's what consistency means in that definition. And if you finish twenty fifth every race, no, you should not be the champion. No, but if you finish like top ten every race, then yes, you should be the champion. If you're telling me to finish top ten every race, then you win the championship. In That's, this format too, that, you at the very least advance the championship four and have a chance. Finish top ten every race. But finishing so top ten every race is virtually you're, impossible you're because you're gonna have high. you're gonna have a bad race. You're gonna have at least a couple bad races every now and then. Harvick had a couple bad races, okay. Got, but because of the fact so that he, other things too. because but of the fact things. that he had so many wins and so many stage wins and top fives and top tens, he shouldn't have even had. He could have afforded a bad run every now and then. A bad run for Harvick is not a really a bad run, okay? Fifth, t- top fifteen or even the top twenty finish. That's not necessarily horrible that's bad under kevin harvick standards because he's so used to winning and stuff but like that doesn't mean that it's a necessarily a bad run he can afford a couple of those every now and then okay it's not like ryan newman's 2003 season where one one week he was in the garage and the next he was in victory lane no this is where he had a couple of pretty bad runs or mediocre runs at best but he had all this buffer that shouldn't even have mattered, yet it does because he was rounded down to everybody else to what? Make him more exciting um, to not crown a fair champion? Because a fair champion cannot be crowned now that Harvick is out of the Final Four. Period. They didn't penalize Eric Jones, they didn't penalize Chase Elliott, they didn't throw the caution in Texas, and they didn't have the different air package can. All those things. But... We're going to put that aside for a second. You can afford to have a bad race in the entire regular season. Not in the playoffs. You can't have a game for a second. And for Kevin Harvick, the round of 16 and the round of 12. The round of 8 is where you put get, get put directly against everyone else. If you're so concerned about having a, rate, a, a bad race... Kevin Harvick's good enough to... He has race, race winning cars. He had a race winning car at Kansas. The air package crew. He had a race winning car at Texas, but he hit the wall because of the stupid the stupid fact they didn't throw the caution. You know, he had race winning cars and they got t- and the wins got taken away from him for other reasons. If he wins one of those two races, he's in we're not talking about. Yeah, but he didn't need to win, that's the thing. If he needed if if even 
either scenario, if he need, if in both scenarios he needed to win, that's one thing. But he didn't need to win. He didn't need to win. Okay, he had a, he should have had enough of a buffer to where he could afford. He finished second. Okay, and he still got like top fifteen at Texas. Okay, and then he was he sh unless he wouldn't have dumped Kyle Busch if he didn't need to. So he could have probably gotten a top five there. So there you go. I mean, there's he no. Was, he would have finished like tenth if he, if he went right, if we stayed behind. Kyle that's Bush, still a pretty good. Like that's still a pretty good finish compared to who probably Denny Hamlin would probably be the only other driver in contention to try past Harvick, and he still would have had a lot more of a buffer because Hamlin had a lot more. More DNFs than Harvick did, um, and not as many wins. And so, it's you just. I don't just, think we should judge a driver by how many DNFs they have. Like Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Like we're not we're not saying he's supposed to be a champion or anything, but we don't we shouldn't be judging a driver on how many DNFs they have. 2003, Ryan Newman had too many DNFs to be champion. It's this system does not... DNFs don't matter in the regular season if you have a win. They don't matter in the playoffs if you have a win. You can win your way out of DNF, and that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, so what, the other point I wanted to talk about is that, like, stage racing and how stage racing will, will promote more aggressive type of racing because you're going to be racing the whole day to try and get points. Now, these cautions I'm a little, little weird on, but I think they can there. So you and your thing said that the reason that you don't like stage racing is because it doesn't do what it sets out to do, and because like the aero package ain't great, driving talent isn't great, and even though the racing was better in late nineties, early two thousands, it was despite. Not because of the playoff format, Gen 4 car, height of its popularity, great tracks, credible drivers. Not playoff system with an added dot on that sort of thing. So, what do you think about that? I think stages are stupid. Um, stages replaced bonus points for leading a lap and leading the most laps. And leading leading the most laps is one thing. Um, won't really get into that, but leading being a lap gave you five bonus points, and so that brought in a lot of strategy when it came to like pits and the like the field fillers on pit road, like they'd stay out uh, to get points and stuff. And I thought that was really cool, like strategy sort of thing. But also, stages break it up into segments. I don't think I would. I don't think that i would mind stages as much if they didn't have a caution after at the end of every stage um if it just kept going green flag i think i would be able to tolerate stages more um because they wouldn't because this really only applies to probably like the, the short tracks or the plate tracks and stuff but like they race way too aggressively. It's like, like Daytona, like the Daytona 500, it's like 60 laps in the first stage or something, right? And they're coming down to the end of the stage. It's not even, we're not even 60 laps into a 200 lap race. And there's a big one that takes out a ton of good cars for no reason except for some merely stupid bonus points, okay? That's, that shouldn't be, you shouldn't, um, you shouldn't ruthlessly take out so many good cars and risk injuries and stuff all for a few bonus points. I mean, like that's not that shouldn't come down to the case. If it was coming down to just if it was if they just kept going, then that wouldn't have happened because they knew that they were still going to be racing green flag. I mean, they would have raced a little bit aggressively, but they wouldn't have raced too aggressively to a point where they're going to wreck each other. Um, that's like on the short tracks as well. Like they bump and stuff, and they hit each other, and like that has a less chance for a wreck and that's just more just plain short track racing but like it's still the same principle and it still applies and i and it just breaks it up into segments it doesn't even give the advertised distance and it's just it's just a fabricated debris caution i've said this before it's just a fabricated debris caution um which they still have they fucked up debris caution because they, they, they if they were going to really get a fabricated debris caution they really would just throw it 10 laps to go and be boom but no they, this is just a fabricated debris caution just so that Oh, uh, there's no actual strategy with fuel mileage or anything like that, okay? Uh, and they try to just overestimate Kyle Busch's when it's like, oh, he's so close to running out of fuel. You know, he's almost out of gas. He's going to run out of gas when he really had enough gas to do almost a complete burnout after the race, okay? That's, and they, like, they try to overestimate everything, but it doesn't work, okay? 
That's what I have to say about stages. So. Okay, so your main points against it are that it causes aggressive racing, which is good. It's not. It's not. It's good at the end of the race, but not good at the end of at the beginning. You hate. And in general, six more exciting racing. There are still big ones in the years leading up to um, 2017 without stages that happen in the first thing. And sure, wrecks are going to happen. That's part of the play track. But if it's really a problem four dates a year, then yeah, we can, if we get rid of stage caution, then it's fixed. That's a minor issue, but it's still going to create really exciting racing. Like, you're, they're racing, like, at the end of the race, to the competition caution sometimes. So, the fact that it's getting, getting you better and more aggressive plate races isn't a bad thing. It's an incredible thing. It just makes the racing better. And that's what you want to see. Um, and strategy, there's the, the leading left, leading most left thing. We didn't really need to get rid of it. It's a cool, cool thing to have. But there's still sort of social strategy. Like you, you go to Pocono, you can pit there without losing a lap. So you can pit with three to go and try and get back out in the front of the field with a few lap old tires. If you're at a road course, you saw the Daytona road course, everyone tried to pit while it was still green before two laps to go. And some stayed out for the caution. There's, there's a good balanced strategy, I think, to so just make pit strategy a little bit more interesting since you have two two cautions to plan around. So just also are four ad breaks that the Oh the ad breaks. Oh the ad breaks. So oh the ad so breaks. Okay, yeah, we can we can go off about commercials a different time, okay? Um yeah, commercials aren't the problem with the playoff format. No, they're not. Um but we can because that's why we're gonna do it a different time. Um you already made a rant about too many commercials, didn't you? Too many commercials? I think I did. I might have to do it again. Um, can always do it over again. I actually have a couple of the videos I wanted to do. Don't think I'll be able to do them. But, um, I don't know. Okay. Um, playoff format is horrible. I will admit this 2017 to present format is better than the 2014 to 2016 format. At least it took a step up. Um, I will say something good about the stages. They have made it more, quote unquote, more fair. To to a some degree, and they have it has. It's not at the same level as the bare bones points format. That's what it should be, but somewhat more consistent. Um, the 2004 to whatever 2013 format or something like that is more little changes in between that but like okay it's not as good okay but every system has screwed over a deserving champion now with the Kevin Harvick situation um and you never see anything with the 1970 whatever to 2003 format you never saw the deserving champion get screwed out of a championship because they had to be able to build up a, they had enough of a buffer because there was no rounding no extra bonus points except for like leading the most laps and stuff there's no other extra fabrication brought into it because they just had raw excitement and it was working okay Take a look at 2003. The champion was already locked up basically with Matt Kenseth. He had dominated the entire season. But you take a look at some of the later races, they were still really exciting. Even the Homestead race, the final race, Matt Kenseth had already locked up the championship. He had blown an engine early in the race, already out of the race. There was late drama. So it was still exciting. You can't get that nowadays um, because they fabricated it too much. And I think that's stupid. Um, they had the raw, t- they had the raw excitement. They had the raw talent. They had all the fans. They had great TV packages. They had great aero packages. Uh, they had great tracks. They had everything. And they screwed it up because they thought it wasn't working. They wanted a more corporate-induced, fabricated system, and it ended up fucking up the sport to near irreversible damage at this point. That's my closing argument. Alright, I have 
guess I'll do my program over here. Okay, so nothing you argued about is related to the playoff system. Yes, it is. The great racing you're talking about, the, 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 the great racing you talk about, you listed them yourself, the aero package, the drivers, the track, all those other things were the reason the racing was so great. Not because of the boring playoff format. Great races. But there was no playoff great, format. There were great racing in that time. But not because of the playoff format. That was so boring. I think that's the reason they're trying to change it up. It's not exciting. Unless there's some points by them. Chronically deserving champion. Yeah. But I need to find some way to crown the deserving champion while also making the racing more exciting. That's what they are doing. Well, it obviously isn't working. Front the whole time. I didn't interrupt you. Don't interrupt me. Out front, rewarding them a bunch of points, while also making everything exciting by racing the stages, playoff and elimination format, all that jazz. So really, if we look at it, the reason the racing isn't so great now is because of the decline in aero package, in driver, in, in fan support. In the tracks we race at, all of that, not just because we abolish some crazy, old, boring, and obsolete points format. Boring so, and abs, me. With that, guys, we're, we're, I think we think we gotta we gotta end here. Stick and ball sports. Fine. Comment down below who I won this. About stick and ball sports. No, no I don't like that. No, shut up. So anyway, guys, comment down below who won this debate. Uh, was it me? Was it Brian? Whatever. It was, it was not you. It was not me. It was a tie. Neither of us won. It's a tie. It's a tie. Yeah, um, a tie record debate in California in one week. Winner gets Dynaco. Winner gets Dynaco for the Piston Cup. He did what this cup? Anyway, guys. Till next time. See you guys later. Goodbye. Yeah.